All right, hello and welcome to the first episode in which in what we hope is um many episodes. This is Minecraft obviously and we're going to try and have a little discussion here about Minecraft and education. So I've got two guests with me today, one very special guest and one just, you know, average guest. <laughs> oh, don't talk about Joel like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um I'll start with the Minecraft. I don't feel that special. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one that started it all, man. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So well, um, I disagree. I think I think <laughs> Rob was doing it at the same time, or maybe even a little before me. But uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> we'll have a debate about that and throw snowballs okay. at each other at some point. <laughs> so let's we'll start with Minecraft teacher. If you can just say who you are and all about yourself. Uh yeah. Well, my name is Joel Levin. Uh, some people online call me the Minecraft teacher. Uh, I'm a private school teacher in New York City. I, I work mostly with uh, younger children, uh, seven, eight, nine year olds, second and third grade. Um, however, I also do some high school classes and I've done a whole lot with uh, Minecraft with a bunch of different age groups. All right, and Speed Breed, the man in the cape and mask. Uh, yes, that's the Batman costume here. Uh, my name is Rob Newberry. I'm a teacher in Singapore. I work at an international school. Um, I do most of the tech integration for the K to 12. Um, the last couple of years, I've been spending my time in primary, um, but uh, I've been spending more time in secondary this year and um, kind of monitoring our laptop program. And I've been using Minecraft in the school for, I guess, it's coming up on two years. All right, and I'll introduce myself. My name is Colin Gallagher. I'm IT facilitator for ISS International School in Singapore. I work with elementary school students too, um, K to 5. Um, yeah, and same as Rob, probably two years um, working with Minecraft in, in our school. Um, but been playing it since, I don't know, I, I, can't e I was trying to think of the dates when Alpha was released. Was it 2010? I can't remember. Yeah, I think so. I yeah. think so. There were there were some super early test versions in 2009, but, but 2010 is kind of when the internet became aware of it. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the first time you came across Minecraft. Um, I'll start with you, Joel. Just to, um, what's what's your first memories of it? Maybe we can um, take a take a fly up into the sky while we're talking here. And sure. Take a wander around. Um. Well, I had um I, I the very first time I saw it, I I think it was just sort of on a on a on a forum page. Someone uh, linked a screenshot. And I said, well, that looks interesting. And I, I Googled it and I, I downloaded the, you know, the, the free version and connected to just this crazy server where people were making these giant inappropriate statues. And, uh, <laughs> still it was, are, still it was, are. It was just this giant, you know, it was this open creative server and, you know, people were uh, being like people on the internet will be. And I said, oh, this, you know, this isn't for me. But so months go by, and then I had a friend uh, who said, you know, you got to check out this game. You got to check out this game. And I said, yeah, 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 I've seen it. Uh, and uh, but he said, no, 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 they keep adding things. It's developing. Um, there's a real adventure mode now, survival mode. And I said, okay, I'll check it out. And uh, I tried it. And this was, I would say, uh, August of, of 2010. And you know, I immediately saw the potential and and. just I, I was hooked and I played quite a bit for nonstop for a few months and mostly with my daughter who was uh, not quite five at the time mm -hmm. uh, so we just had some really great adventures you know exploring and building little houses and solving problems and seeing what we could do and looking up things online and watching videos uh, and it was just so cool I, I felt that she was getting so much out of it I felt like it was this really meaningful time that we were spending together uh, and you know, it sort of dawned on me, you know, in September or October of that year that, you know, I really need to do this with, uh, I, I was thinking with my second grade class at the time. Mm. Um, and so it took me a while to kind of figure out how it was going to work with, with a server, um, how I was able to kind of tweak the game and modify it such that, uh, whoa, I fell in a hole. Um, <laughs> uh you know, modify it so that it could kind of meet my needs in the classroom. And then I think I finally uh, started it in a classroom setting in January of, of 2011. And, you know, mm. I really only expected to be doing it for um, maybe a couple weeks, a few classes, but 
I ended up doing it pretty much on and off for the whole rest of the year just because the kids were getting so much out of it and I was able to find that it was a real launching point to do to do other things mm. uh, in my class with, with my students. I've often wondered, um, did you, at, like from the very start, um, integrate it? In, uh, do you teach an IT curriculum in your school? Or were, were yes. You, yeah. Yeah, so I teach uh, I teach IT classes, um, and you know my school's pretty progressive. They there really isn't a set curriculum. I mean, there's a certain number of skills the kids kind of have to uh, work on in second grade. Uh, they have to uh, you know to practice their typing, and, yeah. and we start talking about internet research and internet safety and that kind of stuff. But uh, you know, it's 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 open ended enough that that I'm sort of free to teach with whatever tool I want. So I, I kind of had this idea that. Well, they'd, they'd be practicing their typing, and maybe we'd do a little internet research. We'd be, you know, they could go on the Minecraft wiki um, and, and look up strategies in the game. But it, it was really early on. I mean, maybe even in the first class that I realized that there was a lot more potential uh, to talk about specifically digital citizenship, mm. uh, which if, if someone's unfamiliar with that term, it's, you know, kind of how we treat each other online, what's public, what's private, internet safety. Um, it, it's kind of this umbrella term for all of these uh, sort of new 21st century connectivity social issues that, that we all we are all dealing with. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, the kids were having arguments. They were having disagreements over what was happening in the game and they were saying hurtful things to each other because that's how they're used to playing games you know yeah. if you go play on xbox live <laughs> the way people treat each other is 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 quite appalling sometimes <laughs> so you know here here was a chance to kind of play through some of these scenarios and confront some of these issues sort of in a controlled setting mm -hmm. um in a place where i was able to to kind of guide the discussion and and have some meaningful resolutions uh, you know, and it was just often other simple things like, uh, you know, I, I a very common problem was that uh, some kids would would hoard items and not and not share with the uh, with the group, especially when they had like a, a group building task to to accomplish. And you know, I get that. That's that's part of the gamer mentality. You know, if you're playing an adventure game, you know, you you, you stroll it by yourself. You stroll into town. You loot every. <laughs> <laughs> every uh, villager's uh, house of all their possessions, and then you you use it for your own personal game. But you know that doesn't work in a game like Minecraft, where you're you're trying to collaborate to to do something together. Um, and you know you can extrapolate that that doesn't work in the 21st century when we're all working together on the internet and we're all trying to uh, um, create some greater good. Uh, so it just became this really fascinating way to explore these issues in a way that was totally accessible to these these young children mm. rob how about you well i think uh, the, everything I've, that joel just said i, I mean i'm 100 percent in agreement with the i think that it was it was uh, for me what i saw i saw a video i think at the time i was playing a lot of modern warfare three or two i think colin and i would have been playing modern warfare for years when i used to live in thailand and uh, when I was living in Thailand, we used to play this Modern Warfare 2. And then when I moved to Singapore, um, it was Modern Warfare 3. And uh, we were following Scene Anders and just watching his videos and thinking they were so mm. funny and, and how to troll people on Black Ops or how to troll people in, Mine, you know, in Modern Warfare 3. And one day he just posted this random video. I'll never forget it. It was like part one of a 14 or 15 part series. It was a blue background. And I still remember it. And um, it's funny because I was watching the Minecraft documentary just today. And um, and there's the video, and it's it's him walking around talking about Minecraft. And I remember thinking, wow, what is this game? Like, I, it, it looks so strange. And you know, when I first looked at it, it looked kind of silly compared to some of the games that I've been playing. I mean, games like Portal and and you know, Modern Warfare Three, which are much more sort of graphics heavy and you know, very textured and and all that kind of stuff. Um, so then when I saw this kind of boxy, kind of strange game, I didn't I didn't really get into it. But then when I watched his video, I was thinking, wow, like. He's, this is something really neat, and um, and it was right away, just like Joel said. You know, I saw immediate applications for the classroom. I knew that kids would really be liking this. They'd probably think it was a lot of fun. Um, all the digital citizenship, uh, digital citizenship stuff, and and um, just like Joel said, the the, the kids do um, have massive conversations and and develop communities online and how they share things and who they share with. And um, there's lots of teaching, sort of teachable opportunities in the game. So. Um, I think I don't remember. Joel, think you might think that I was actually, you know, earlier than you. I'm not sure if it was that, but I feel like we started in in August. Like we started just as school started in in 2000 and 
I, I don't remember. It doesn't really matter. But it was right after school started, I knew that I wanted to do a CCA after school, like a co-curricular activity. So I, uh, mm -hmm. I just put it on the list, and, um, and we had about 35 kids show up. And they were all super into it, and they were modding the game, and they were doing all kinds of stuff, and they they knew when the releases were out, and then we ended up hooking up with a company what? called uh, Redstone Host. Sorry, Joel. Yeah, no, just remind me, what what were the age groups that you were uh, doing that with? The, the, at the time, it was secondary. I, I started as a secondary CCA, so just for high school kids. So that would be years for us. It's a year six, sorry, year seven, eight, nine, and up. And we had mm -hmm. most of the kids were seven, eight, and nine, and then we had a couple of year elevens and a couple of year twelves who were just kind of quietly playing the game they didn't really want to tell people and I'm not sure if they thought it was cool or whatever it was but um, you know wrote a couple of blog posts about it and um, not many but you know mm. just a couple of things about it very just basic telling people about the game and trying to get into it and I remember the first time I played it I must I think I played for four hours straight and you know I remember telling everybody like oh you have to play this game it's totally cool and it's really different and yeah so it just kind of spiraled from there and now it's like the most popular CCA at our school I think we've got like what this 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 term we've got 77 kids in our primary CCA, we've got so many kids that we've actually had to buy more uh, Minecraft accounts, like just because we um, we only had 20 originally, and uh, it wasn't enough. So just to make sure that everybody can actually get in and play the game, we've actually had to purchase more. And our school has been really great about it. As, as same thing with Joel said, I think that having a supportive admin, my my principal's a gamer, my like the head of my school's like you know the same guy is the is is a gamer, but also the director of administration is a gamer. He plays tons of Dota, like Dota 2. Mm -hmm. Is that D-O-T-A or Dota? I'm not sure. but So, yeah, so they're, I, they're I pretty... Dota. I don't know. Yeah, I say Dota yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so they were really supportive of it. So then that's how it kind of, that's how it kind of just took off. And, um, yeah, I guess we've, we've, we haven't stopped. And I don't, I can't even, I can't imagine what it, like, what would be next. I can't imagine yeah. sort of ever, ever stopping this. Yeah, it's a similar, <laughs> similar story of mine. Like, um, we started off as a, as an ECA last year only it feels like i started playing minecraft it feels like there's been a massive gap between when i started playing minecraft and when i actually implemented it in in school it just feels like i think it was just you know the situation i was in um the school previous didn't have the hardware to kind of support a server or anything so i kind of couldn't do it until i came here to singapore so um last school year started off the the after school club but always with the intention of fitting it into a um unit of inquiry in our in our curriculum this school year so um that was the that was the main focus because i think that's where the where the um kind of authentic kind of learning can come from with with the with the kids and in, in the game so uh we used it in grade three this year in a unit of inquiry called um how we organize ourselves this is um this is the international baccalaureate curriculum um yep and the elementary school is called the PYP primary years program so it's an inquiry based unit it's set over like six weeks and it basically was um, how do systems come together to form community so um, we uh, Rob just mentioned their redstone hosts so um, redstone hosts give free servers to student to teachers um, which is pretty pretty good um, so I got three of those, one for each grade, one one for each class, and so each class had a had a world to build a community in, and they reflected on it as they went along. We had rubrics to assess their learning along the way. So um, yeah, it's 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 where I wanted to be. I was, I'm wondering if <laughs> if if every grade could have a unit that has Minecraft in it. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, grade four or doing a unit in maybe four weeks time about natural disasters and um, I was looking at a few plugins that create natural disasters mm -hmm. to th this evening so there could be a scope there but I'm not going to force the issue it's 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 um it's got to happen organically and it's got to make sense as well sure. so um so yeah so that's um we've touched on how we first brought it into our schools let's talk about um Minecraft's edu Joel because it's been a massive um a massive kind of, I don't know, assistance, let's say, <laughs> to teachers yeah, around the world. Yeah, totally. um, uh, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it's funny, you know, um, I, I never expected, you know, two years ago, uh, or, you know, heck, even a year and a half ago, I, I never would have expected that I would own, uh, you know, a software company, a startup, and that I'd <laughs> be in business with, with Mojang, but mm. it, sort of, it sort of happened organically. Um, you know, I think I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, my blog about teaching with Minecraft got a lot of attention. Uh, and, 
you know, the long and the short of it is I started talking with Mojang. Uh, my, the, the people that, my future business partners al already had been, uh, uh, some great folks uh, in, in Finland, had already been talking to Mojang about ways to, to get this game into schools um, and, and make a sort of a special school version. And they contacted me and said, Joel, you seem to be the one who's furthest along in actually doing this. We'd love your expertise. We'd love your, your help in doing this. And, you know, at first I said, no, no, are you kidding me? I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I, what, do I, what do I know about uh, software development? But I, I ended up talking to Carl Manet, who's the, the CEO of Mojang, who said, uh, no, Joel, we know who you are. We really like what you're doing. We'd like to see this happening in more schools. Uh, we'd really like it if you were involved. So, you know, how could I say no to that? Exactly, yeah. Um, right. So anyway, so that that's that's how it all started. But but I'll jump ahead now. So, yeah, we've spent the last year and a half uh, making Minecraft EDU, which is a custom mod of Minecraft. Uh, we've packed it full of all kinds of tools that kind of lower the barrier of entry uh, for teachers wanting to get the, the game going in their own classroom. Right. Uh, so it's it's much much easier to just get a server up and running. It's just a few clicks, uh, and then you you kind of have a fair amount of classroom management tools in the game world, so that you know you can move kids around, you can freeze them, you can mute mute, mute them, you can give them things easily, um, and this is all done with uh, buttons and checkboxes rather than a whole lot of type commands. Yeah, right. uh, you know, because you know we're all techies on this call here. Uh, but, you know, I was showing this game to, to history teachers, to language teachers, to literature teachers, and, and, you know, they could see the potential. They were excited. But as soon as I showed them, you know, how, this is how you run a server. This is how you make things happen in the game. They were like, you know, I can't do this. Mm. Yeah. So um, so we really made it uh, a lot easier. And, and Mojang's been great. You know, they've given us access to the Minecraft source, source code. Uh, they allow us to resell uh, the game to schools at, at a discount. It's about 50. If you buy in bulk, uh, it's about 50% off the, the, the full price of Minecraft. Yeah. Um, and it's just been really great, the, all the support we've received. And so now we're we're in over a thousand schools uh, yeah. we're in, in countries wow. all over the world. We're on, we're on, we're on six different, con we've sold to six schools on six different continents. Um, if, you, if you have any leads for any schools in Antarctica, you know, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, even, uh, I know. I, I would even give it to them free. If, if anybody's listening and is in Antarctica, I'll, I'll, I'll give you Minecraft for free just to say we have, uh, we're on seven continents. Oh, man, if this um, happens, that'll just be the most amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's being used in all age groups from, like, you know, pre-K, kindergarten, all the way up through college. Uh, it's being used in all subjects. Um, and, and it's just really, really cool to, to see people using the game in, in ways that I never, ever imagined. Um, so, yeah, so I, I think a lot of people are getting to know what Minecraft EDU is about. Um, like, obviously, it's, it's, the, it's the pretty much the only way it makes the most sense to buy your accounts from Minecraft EDU because it's, it's obviously money off the, the full, the, the, um, mm -hmm. the kind of public... Account, um, accounts for Minecraft, um, yeah, and I've I've really I've I've never actually uh, gone into the Minecraft EDU kind of you know the admin system, but I've seen YouTube videos of the tutorials and it, I can see why it would help the lay person, let's say, <laughs> to to actually set up their world and and do what they need to do in a really sure. user friendly kind of way. It's really you know yeah. what's yeah. interesting. Well, you know, oh. no, go, yeah, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Joel. Well, no, I was just saying, you, know, you should uh, you should check it out, definitely. Um, mm. You know, it, it makes things easier, but um, I'm also, for 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 the more advanced users, I'm really, really proud of the building tools that, that we've included. Um, I actually think that we have one of the most powerful uh, world editors uh, oh. of any Minecraft mod out there uh to create kind of because that, that was another problem that we saw you know teachers were saying well gee i'd love to you know make a map of the roman Colosseum and and take my kids there but yeah you know I, teachers are saying i don't have time to do that i can't do that block by block by block um you know of course you can find something that somebody else has created that's always an option 
Uh, but we really, that was something else I felt was important to, to include a, a building tools into the game to really speed up the process of having teachers be able to get their content and their ideas up and running in a game world uh, as painlessly as possible. So we have some very user-friendly tools, you know, things be able, able to like fill a large area with blocks, um, mm -hmm. put down many blocks at a time, uh, you know, things that are done just with, again, with buttons and menus. Uh, but then there's also a very popular and powerful mod called World Edit uh, that is right. included with Minecraft EDU. So you can use our, our friendly tools, you can use the, the more advanced World Edit tools, or what I do when I'm creating worlds is I just, you know, I'm going back and forth between them. Uh, and it's just, it's just a really efficient way to get ideas out of my head and into a Minecraft world. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes I'll have an idea for a lesson the night before, and I'll just be able to quickly plop down some buildings and areas and signs and pop down some of our Minecraft EDU special blocks to help kids teleport around or say where they can and where they can't build, things like yeah. that. Uh, and, you know, I'll have kids playing the next morning. And that's, yeah. that's really rewarding for me as a teacher. Yeah. I didn't know that the, the uh, you had, a, like, a world edit within Minecraft EDU. Yeah, that's, there's some cool stuff. There's, like, yeah. an Everest one, right? There's, like, you can even like you can even get kids to climb Everest or something. I was looking at that the other day. Yeah, well, that... That was a map. That was a map that I I've created. Um, right now, it's it's a little bit do it yourself. Uh, there's there's a pr there's a growing community of teachers that are creating lessons in Minecraft Edu and and sharing them. Uh, but in the in the near future, we actually want to integrate that into the mod itself, so that that when you're launching a server, you'll be able to click a button and browse uh, lessons that either we've created or other teachers have created. And you know the the the, the goal is to have this all be, you know, like in a directory and that's sortable and taggable and, and with ratings. So, you know, you can you can browse our history worlds and, you know, see cool. all the highest rated history worlds and see the comments people have read. You know, press a button, click it, and it gets downloaded right onto your server and you can be up and running with it. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of figuring out how all of that's going to work. We have some, we had some successful tests, uh, but it's not quite, at the level of user friendliness we want so mm -hmm. we continue to work on it but you know th there are a ton of maps out there already there there is uh there are a couple sites where people have collected uh maps specifically f to use with minecraft edu um so people can get an idea of what's uh, what's out there well i've done my thing for the cause i i presented a couple of weekends ago in hong kong at a conference and um and my friend who works in a school there um hadn't been using Minecraft, but she went ahead and bought your Minecraft EDU package. Great. So she's <laughs> getting up and running. We got a tweet from uh, Centuria today. He he sent us a message, or he sent uh, he sent a message out, and he said, "Wow, he said lots of stuff happening in Hong Kong." He said, th "You know, he he retweeted Colin and uh, his wife's uh, Sharon's video uh, that they made of um, their presentation, and then uh, and he said um, he said, yeah, there must have been a lot of talk about you know, Minecraft in Hong Kong because mm. there's uh, all of a sudden there's all these new accounts coming up over <laughs> there and." So awesome. that was pretty. Yeah, it was really cool. That's there was something cool. interesting today. Yeah. I, I I was in a, I was at I was at school today, and we were talking about Minecraft. And a year two teacher approached us and um, and said, you know, what we want to we're doing buildings and structures, and we're wondering if the kids can go into a Minecraft world and create buildings and structures and talk about shapes and talk about this and that. And this is year two, right? These kids are what seven, six, and seven. Oh, it was seven, maybe seven and eight, and. Um, so we, we looked at it and we thought about it and we thought, okay, let's do it on the iPads first because we typically use iPads in early years. But then we thought about the limitations of the iPad in Minecraft. So we ended up um, allocating a bunch of accounts and we created three Minecraft servers on a uh, on our Mac Pro that we've got sitting in our office and um, and created different IP addresses for them. And the kids just started getting into the uh, – <laughs> I'm going to screen cap you guys. You look hilarious. And there's little, uh, <laughs> you know, little hot tubs We're there. We're taking a soak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, so yeah. these kids, yeah. So these kids ended up uh, ended up creating stuff, and it was a it was it ended up being really great. And uh, so afterwards, I was talking to Eggman, who was our primary uh, tech coordinator, and I said, um, I said maybe I'll put an email out to the teachers, just just primary teachers. I mean, I'll do it in secondary, but I don't think it'll be it'll catch on as quickly. But I'll get, I'll send it out there to the teachers first, and see if there's any teachers who are interested in doing a Minecraft workshop. Not mm -hmm. because we've never done anything formal. We've whenever there's been Minecraft, it's always been Eggman or I that have gone into the classes and done it. Or we've done it as a CCA, but we've never had teachers like we've actually done professional development for teachers in Minecraft. 
So I put it out there. I said, hey, if anybody's interested in doing this, it would be kind of fun. We'll just be able to sit around in, in a world together and build some stuff, and you can get an idea of what this game's all about, why your kids are so addicted and interested in it, and, um, and then we can talk about some shared ideas for how you might use it in the classroom. And we had a massive amount of teachers right back. Like within, within about an hour, we had 10 teachers re reply right away in the affirmative saying, we're totally into this idea. We really want to do it. Great. This sounds like a great mm -hmm. idea. Sign us up. So yeah, I think that I think that it was like what you said, Joel. I think that there's a lot of teachers who are keen; they really want to do it, um, but it's the technical know-how that uh, that they're just maybe a little bit afraid of. And I think that's any technology, actually, just as a tech integrator. I think that's yeah. any technology that they might be concerned yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. But um, what was cool was um, we we then we after after the teachers, then we just started brainstorming. We said we should do this for the parents too. Yeah, I was just saying, I was just thinking that that's been going through mm -hmm. my brain too. Like at the end of our unit, we did we invited the parents in to to play the game with with their kids but um like they they hear about their kids playing it all the time at home they're even a bit anxious about the amount of time they're playing with it yeah i i, I mean i think it's so important for parents to be engaged with their kids in in any kind of gaming um yeah. what you know or in any activity um mm. but i think you know when, when you're talking about games if if the parents themselves aren't gamers so so frequently the parents just sort of check out it's like you know this is this is a little recreational activity that my kids do you know when they've earned some screen time that kind of thing and then they don't pay attention um and i, I frankly think that's kind of a dangerous mindset uh, especially with a game like minecraft um yep. you know minecraft has the potential to become a real obsession uh, and that can either be a positive or or a negative um, but you know, if you're a kid predisposed to, um, you know, playing a game uh, in in overabundance without, you know, at at the expense of your other responsibilities and your other social context in life, um, you know, it can prevent a problem. And the solution to this is to have the if you're this kid to have the adults in your life, you know, being engaged asking what you're doing get, prompting you to do constructive things with with your passions um and and set frankly setting good examples uh it almost always it whenever i have a parent come to me and said you know uh you know i really wish you hadn't shown my kid minecraft in, yeah. in <laughs> class because now that's all he wants to do i'm like well what does your kid do in minecraft oh i have no idea you know right and or you know, so I really try to get them engaged. Whenever some, you know, I, I feel that a kid is out of balance with the amount of time that they're playing, um, you know, there's usually some other issues going on. There's usually some other other oh, problems yeah. in their life. Oh, but for sure. but I, I should just, you know, the, the caveat here is these cases are few and far between. I've had far, far more parents come up to me and just say things like, you know, thank you for showing my kid a game where he's creating something and making something and not just killing over and over again. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Or, you know, you know, because my kid plays Minecraft, now, now he's interested in programming um, or making videos or doing computer graphics or, or whatever. I mean, it's just a great yeah. launching point. There's just so many ways you can use and express your passion for Minecraft that builds all these other computer skills. There's a massive... Um... I don't know. There's a ma massive link between YouTube, you know, how-to videos and and Minecraft. Like every student that plays Minecraft that I know of wants to share it yep. with other students around yep. the world, and YouTube is becoming that area to do that. Um, and that's another area that you know we can kind of latch on to that to kind of teach digi digital citizenship and sure. you know being digitally safe as well yep. to students um, because YouTube is a wild and rugged place at times with the um, with the comments that happen on there mm -hmm. but well, uh, it's, what's interesting was that um, uh, it w uh, at the end of the our year six last year like the end of the year six graduation um, the, c the kids made a video and the video was uh, it was like what do you know where do, where do you see yourself in 10 years or what do you want to do in your future or, you know like it was like twisted sister what do you want to do with your life it's like one of those kind of videos and the kids um, and I've never heard this before because I've been to a lot of graduations in the last couple of years and um, they were they were an, there was an overwhelming it, it was it, you couldn't not notice it but the kids were like I want to design video games or I want to be a video game designer mm -hmm. or I want to I want to make video games and I'd never heard that before and I remarked on it, and I said, uh, "I said, I, you know, I think that, and I, I, I don't want to give, I don't want to say it's all about Minecraft, but it, it just might be that this game is so accessible 
it's so easy to get into. It's very easy to mod. It's very easy to make it, it to create to to make it your own kind of game. Um, and it doesn't seem like it's really kind of hard work, right? Like it seems like there's never been a point in history where uh, where game design and and the tools to create games have been so accessible. In my mind, mm -hmm. there hasn't been. Mm. I mean, there's like we we we've got this after school club where we where we teach game salad. And um, you know, and we were playing this game called Super Crate Box the other day, and so we were showing the kids how to create like uh, just basically a platform, and then have a little a little like cube that's above it that bounces and moves left and right depending on how your keys work. So it's basically the exact same physics as the game, um, but it's just done on a very very small level. So to to create stuff, it's actually not that hard. I mean, we're not talking about something on the scale of Minecraft yet, but. But uh, it's accessible, and I think that the kids, um, the kids can see themselves. They really, like, they love this kind of stuff. They find it interesting. It's, it's a, it's a create, it's a creative outlet. So yeah, I think it's, a, I think Minecraft deserves a lot of credit for that kind of I thing. I think so. I think. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree. I think it's, you know, it's really changed the way kids think about what they should be doing with, you know, when they're playing a game. Uh, you know, I, it's especially in my, I have a third grade after school program. Uh, where I really I let the kids run their own Minecraft EDU servers. I let them use all of the the, the teacher tools, uh, and what all of them are doing, almost all of them, are they're creating little games for each other. Uh, yep. You know, you know some of the you know maybe they're they're creating these sort of death match arenas, and they're, yeah. they're coming up with rules and structure, or maybe they're telling stories. You know, uh, yep. I had these these couple girls that made this this whole Harry Potter world where. You know, you start, you, you you join the server, and you're under the staircase as Harry Potter, and then you, you know, you read a letter. You know, they they used a sign that says you're a wizard, and you you go. They made Diagon Alley, and that you have to you have to pick the pet. Um, and they've done all these really really clever solutions, or sort of like Minecraft interpretations of this Harry Potter lore. And you know, you go to Hogwarts, you pick a house, and you know, to me, that's creation, that's storytelling, that's game making. Um, yep. And you know, Minecraft is just such a perfect template for this type of this type of expression. I think a blank canvas for for the kids of today, basically. Yeah. There's so much yeah. there's so much room for for anything they can do. And I think that's what inspires them too, too when they think of um, their future and you know what can they do. Like I think they're they're all pretty aware of the story of of Minecraft. I think they know that. It's one guy, Notch, actually one of the videos that I put together for our students, you know, Minecraft is, one of the kids said, said it's a game with blocks and the owner is from Sweden. So yeah. there's a, <laughs> there's a, um, there's an awareness there of how, you know, one person could, could make something so cool and creative. Um, and that kind of segues into our kind of, an, our next kind of area of discussion. And that's, you know, what is the future of Minecraft? Like, you know, a lot of games have come along since then, like Terraria. Um, um, I can't even think of any other ones, but um, Raid. Yeah, it's like, you yeah. know, Minecraft is one like right now in my like brain. It's kind of the only game out there that has such has such kind of scope for creativity. You know, maybe in a couple of years' time, something else will come along and just blow our minds all together. But right now, <laughs> it is what yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think Minecraft is kind of it for for the moment. Uh, there are some other ones coming on, uh, coming up. The um, I'm blanking on the name of this one. There's one that's uh, it's so funny. Minecraft is all about squares. There's another one that's all about triangles, patterns, patterns. <laughs> it's called uh, patterns. Um, Patterns, yeah, I believe it's by the people who make Second Life. Um, and oh, they're back. They're, sort yeah. of, <laughs> they're trying. They're, they're, they're trying. Uh, they're trying they're to trying catch up. And it has a lot of potential. <laughs> and, and you know, they, they're kind of, they're off to a good start. Um, but you know, Minecraft just has such uh, a, a presence uh, and such a following. And and it's it's not only about the game itself. I mean, you know, there's been a ton of cool updates to Minecraft recently, and there's a lot more on the horizon. But you know, no matter how fast they develop and how much they develop, uh, there is just such a community. I mean, they, you know, literally tens, if not hundreds of thousands of modders and programmers and developers making more content for Minecraft. So I think any other game is going to have a hard time sort of catching up with with that, uh, that aspect of it. Um, now, it's possible Minecraft may kind of lose the it factor at some point. You know, mm. all of the... 
you know, fifth and sixth grade boys and whoever may pick another game to, to, to be really fanatical about and, and maybe it'll lose a bit of momentum. But I think uh, I think we're we're all gonna be playing Minecraft for for a long time to come. Dude, yeah. totally. I, I can't. <laughs> I, I mean, I've never ever. I mean, I've been playing games since. Colin and I talk about this a lot. We, I've been playing games since. Like, my dad built our first Apple IIe in 1981, I think. And you know, I've been mm-hmm. playing games on on a computer since then. And you know, we had an app. We had an Atari in the house. And Colin was playing some Atari a couple of weeks ago in Hong Kong. But yeah. you know, we we've, we've been playing games since I was a kid. And I've I have never. And I mean, I'm not just saying this because it's a Minecraft discussion or whatever. Absolutely nothing to gain by saying this. But um, I've never seen a game take off and do what this game has done on such a scale. Like, I- I've never. There's There's been nothing else out there. Like, okay, yeah, World of Warcraft and all that kind of stuff. But even that, like that, you could see that there was a there was a large community of people who just didn't get it and weren't going to get it. And, and it was new and all that kind of stuff, but that's I don't I don't even know if anybody plays World of Warcraft anymore. I mean, I'm not even sure. No, I think like, a couple, I, a couple just, of people play us around the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a couple of people play. Right. But, but I mean, you know, I, I think it has passed. You know, games, games, World of Warcraft has passed its peak. I'm pretty sure that's safe to say. And I don't think Minecraft has. You know? No way. No. No, I don't think yeah. it has. Just because got the started. Kids are still, yeah, the kids are still so into it. They're 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 just as excited today. To tell me about the game and what they did on the weekend, or who did what, or what they're building, like they're just as excited to talk about it as they ever were. Like there's there's been no there's been no like trailing off, not one bit. At least in my experience. Yeah, and what about the uh, high school students that you work with? Or do you see any um, difference in their use of Minecraft? Are they more into modding? Yeah, and... I mean, they're definitely more into mods. I I see fewer Minecraft. Uh, you know, fewer high school kids just playing the the original game. Um, but you know, I, I I see that as a good thing. You know, the kids are seeking out the the style of gameplay that's most interesting to them. Mm. Uh, but they're still playing Minecraft. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's not like they're they're leaving for other games, or they do leave for other games. They come back, but the one they keep coming back to is is Minecraft. Because yeah. it gives them the freedom to go whatever route they want to go, and yeah, yeah. it's just so appealable, yeah. <laughs> it's so appealing to them. Yeah. So yeah, so that's um, I think we might be able to just wrap it up there. It's been a a good discussion for our first yeah, ever episode. Absolutely. And Joel, you're you're very welcome back anytime. You're free. Sure. I know we've got a massive <laughs> like thirteen hour time difference yeah, <laughs> between geez. Singapore yeah. and well, New York. Thanks for a full day ahead of you. Yeah. Thanks for staying up late. Oh, we're always uh, up this Yeah, maybe next time we'll do this on one of my uh, one of my servers. Absolutely. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. 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 All right, so awesome. we'll sign off. We just made this lovely green and white <laughs> pattern thing. Like, my students tomorrow will be going. <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. I'll just say, you know yeah, what? I can't, I, 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 can't, I can't log off until we've, like, All right, this. we're going to have to I, just I'll finish it. complete all day. <laughs> you can make it, you know, you can do this in a couple of parts, I guess. That's the other thing, too, is, like, if you're going to do these videos, you can always say, okay, well, here's part two, part three of the discussion or whatever. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, this is the thing, actually. You know, um, I, I, I meant to bring this up earlier, actually, so we can still talk about this. Um actually playing Minecraft in, in the spare in my spare time it actually I only play it and I was talking to Rob about this earlier I only play Minecraft when my kids are playing Minecraft my students are playing Minecraft mm-hmm. I don't I don't have that same kind of e- experience if I'm playing Minecraft on my own I think the and I think that's the difference between when we introduce Minecraft in schools the collaboration and the teamwork is something that just knocks um, the socks off the students because they uh, some of them have not experienced that before in Minecraft and it kind of opens up another layer of engagement for them in in Minecraft when the actual teamwork and collaboration and right. they start seeing each other. Yeah, Go. I mean, I I have had kids that you know they they come into the classroom they're very jaded. Ah, oh, please, I've been playing Minecraft for a year. I know everything. This <laughs> and that, and this and that. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you know, and even if they've played online, it it's it's just different than playing with a group of people in the same room that you that you know these are your friends. Uh, you know, with with the teachers sort of guiding the experience. Um, it's you know they. Uh, they they have a great time and it, it's a new experience to them. Exactly, it's exactly what you're saying. The uh, it's funny after Colin and I had that conversation, um, I, uh, I I started up Minecraft again last night. I started I just fired uh. up a single player, 
and just uh, turned it on and started playing. And uh, and I was I was right away. I was just like, "What do you mean? This, what do you mean? This, these skeletons have armor? Like how how could that? Like why 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 was the skeleton got gold? Yeah. It's got gold armor. Like who knew? So many <laughs> things have changed. Yeah, I yeah. remember the first night playing playing first time ever playing Minecraft. Just been stuck in the cave, dark outside. Oh, yeah. Not enough wood and f coal for torches, and just hearing the zombies outside. It's one of the. It's probably one of the most kind of um, apart from the. The storming of the beaches in Medal of Honor, the one of the uh, things yeah. um, that just stands out yeah. in my kind of gaming. Omaha, Omaha Beach. Yeah, Medal Ooh. of Honor is just <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's just just one of those memories that sticks out, and that's what Minecraft's all about is just these kind of memories that stick out and the experiences. And you know, like obviously with students, you know, it, it's kind of I think they dig it more. They're not as jaded as us, <laughs> Cre creatively yeah. wise, you know. Yeah. Well, I think they just—it's just, it's just um, a, a great, a great experience for them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I think um, you, you mentioned the Minecraft documentary before. Um, Yaka mm. Forster, who's an, uh, one of the founders of Mojang, I, I think he put it best that you know, the games that you play when you're a kid have this way of sticking with you, and they have this special place in your memory and your heart. Yeah. Um, mm. And you know, there's this whole generation of kids that Minecraft is that game. Right. Um, they're having all these formative experiences, and you know what? When they are our age, and they're teachers, and they're sitting around and talking about, <laughs> you know, their childhood, they're gonna have this common experience that was Minecraft, and it's so positive, you know. Mm. Um, you know, they sure some of them will be remembering Call of Duty and how they were blowing each other up all night, but I I think it's it's the experiences in Minecraft and and creating things together that is, is gonna really stick with them. Yeah, yeah. For sure. and hopefully kind of molding their um, their future self in you know online living and living in a digital yeah. world you know hopefully hopefully yep. it's a positive experience for them so yeah are we are we still continuing to build this down to the ground or uh, is that going well to I actually I have to get going I have another, <laughs> uh, another meeting all right well we're going to wrap it up here for this first episode uh, thank you Joel for taking time out of your your working day to oh, join you're us. very welcome. I was glad to do it. Yeah, and um, hopefully, yeah, definitely, we'd love to visit one of your students' worlds um, in right, a future episode. Excellent. All right. See ya. All right. Take it easy, Joel. See you soon. Take it easy. Bye. See ya.